When you think of the SCP Foundation, your mind likely goes to the famous, well-known ones. Things like Shy Guy, The Peanuts, The Ikea Store, and so on and so forth. Now those ones are famous for a reason, they're bangers, can't even lie, but the SCP that I want to cover in today's video is not as famous. In fact, I didn't even know it existed until just the other day. And it might not be as famous simply because of how disturbing it is, or rather how disturbing what it does to you is. Today I'm going to be explaining SCP-1562, the carnivorous slide. Leave a like if I should cover more SCPs, and without further ado, let's get into the explanation, shall we? SCP-1562, or the slide, or the carnivorous slide, whatever you want to call it, takes the appearance of a metal playground slide that's 2.2 meters tall and 3.4 meters long, or 7.2 feet tall and 11.1 .1 feet long for the Americans listening. The slide itself looks pretty normal, like an old metal slide that you'd see on a playground from your childhood, and I don't know if y'all remember this, but if you remember going on these slides, these metal ones when you were a kid in the summer, do you remember how hot they were? They would literally burn your skin. Well, this one does something a little bit worse than that. You'll see what I mean in this video. SCP-1562 was acquired from an abandoned playground on the outskirts of a redacted location. We have no idea where it was, but they attained it somehow. The reason it drew the attention of the Foundation was because several children from the area went missing and they traced it to this central location being the slide. The anomalies on the slide will only work if a person sliding down it does so in a specific position. They have to slide down head first on their stomach, with their arms tucked down at their sides. If you try to slide down any other way, no anomalies will happen, nothing bad can happen, you can use the slide as it's intended, just regularly. But if you go down the way I just described, head first, arms down to your side and on your stomach, then, well, you'll see what's gonna happen. After testing, it's been revealed that only human beings are affected by the slide's properties. I'm not sure how they tested that, maybe they threw, like, little rabbits down the slide or something, I don't know. But, uh, when will there be an SCP that only affects mosquitoes or spiders or something? Why do they all affect humans? I don't know. So by now, I'm sure you're asking, what actually happens when a person slides down the slide? Well, that individual will disappear the second they get to the end of the slide about 15 centimeters before the actual end, to be exact. It's as if the person slips into an alternate dimension at that exact point. You can see here in this little render I made where this dotted line is, that's about where you would vanish if you slid down the slide. Attempts to tie safety lines to people and send them down have proved ineffective, because the second the person reaches that spot on the slide, the rope cuts itself off and we lose them. Now, where these people go or exactly what happens to them is where things begin to get rather disturbing. Just like the title says, this SCP is genuinely almost too scary to mention. When an individual blips out of our reality at the end of that slide, they are transported in that same position they slid down the slide in to a tight, enclosed tunnel. They are headfirst on their stomach, arms to their side, and facing downward at an angle. But instead of continuing to slide down the tunnel they're in, they're lodged and stuck inside of this tunnel. The tunnel is thought to be some sort of enclosed cave or dirty tunnel of some sorts, as dirt and rocks surround individuals who get sent there. You'll know how I know that when I read the logs later on. Hold your horses. As I said, it's also at the same downward angle that the metal slide was. So the person that blips off the slide into this tunnel is stuck facing downwards with their arms to their side, chest compressed to the bottom, and all their blood slowly rushing to their head, unable to move, in total complete darkness inside this tunnel. Now, first of all, being stuck in a claustrophobic tunnel where you can't move is bad in general, but being stuck in a claustrophobic tunnel where you can't move at all, and you're being forced to go at a downward angle on your stomach, that might be the worst position you could literally find yourself in ever. Maybe. There might be worse ones. Don't quote me on that. Now, I'm about to read the transcripts of a couple audio logs between the Foundation and the subjects who got sent down the slide into this tunnel. This is where the majority of the details I just described came from. Let me tell you, it gets worse. The first audio log reads as follows. D-2445 was given a two-way communication radio earpiece to talk to researchers observing the test. Communication began immediately after D-2445 disappeared from SCP-1562. 
Dr. Deritz, D2445, can you hear me? Yes, doctor, I can hear you. Where are you now? I, I don't know, it's some sort of very small tunnel. It's really cramped. Can you get me out now? Can you describe it to me? No, it's too dark. I can't see anything and I'm stuck. Stuck how? I'm still headfirst on my stomach and my body's at an angle, but I'm in some sort of tunnel and I'm stuck. I'm completely surrounded by rock or dirt on all sides. I don't have enough room to raise my head or move my arms and I can't move forward. I really want to get out of here now. We're going to try. Can you see anything? Anything at all? No, I told you I can't see anything. I'm getting kind of freaked out. I'm not claustrophobic, but this is pretty uncomfortable. Pull me out of here. Unfortunately, your safety line was severed when you disappeared, so we cannot pull you out. We'll try to figure out another way to retrieve you. For now, just keep calm and keep talking to me. No, 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 no. You need to get me out now. I can't handle much more of this. Please stay calm. We will have you out of there as soon as we can. Okay, I was able to worm my way forward a little bit, but my head hit something. What did you hit? It's a shoe. I think. It's small. Jesus. What's wrong? Get me out of here, doctor. Get me out of here now. Calm down. We'll get you out of there as soon as you can. No, you need to get me out of here right now. This shoe is so tiny. So as you can see, the subject that got sent into this tunnel was able to kind of worm their way down forward slightly, even though they couldn't move their arms and their head was facing downwards. And they eventually got to the little shoe that belonged to a boy, a, a tiny shoe. Now at this point in the logs, the foundation decided to send a person in to rescue that other person, or try to, as well as a GPS tracker and a headlamp to see where this tunnel is actually located, that way they can dig into it. Here is log number two, which takes place right after the plan I just told you. Are you still there, D445? Please, please, I do not want to be in here anymore. We're going to send someone in to pull you out. It started talking. What started talking? The little boy did but it doesn't make any sense. Tell me what he said. He, he just kept asking where he was. I told him I didn't know, but I don't think he was really talking to me because somehow he didn't respond to my voice and he told me to stop crying when I was actually sort of calm. What else? Was he moving at all during this? I don't think so. He, he was screaming and I told him to shut up and he just kept screaming and crying and asking for his mommy. Then he finally stopped and shortly after that, you contacted me again. Please get me out now. Okay, we're sending someone in. Don't panic if you hear or feel something behind you. So they decided to send a new searcher in to find this person in the tunnel. They chose somebody that was smaller sized and skinnier and shorter. That way they could maybe crawl around in the tunnel properly. And like I said, they also sent him with a GPS beacon and a map. Of course, when the searcher went down the slide, the rope was detached and cut the second he got to the end of it. And after that, the GPS beacon can no longer be traced either. So picture this. We have the rescuer now in this small tunnel, as well as the person that just went down the slide earlier that was stuck ahead of them in the small tunnel. The final log takes place right after that searcher gets to the tunnel and tries to worm his way closer to the person who was in there earlier. So the searcher gets to the small tunnel. His headlamp stops working. He wiggles his way down to the initial subject. The subject begins to act very strange at this point, and he begins to repeat the exact same responses that he gave the foundation at the beginning. Like word for word, he says the exact same things. The searcher starts to freak out by this because he heard the other conversation and he knows he's repeating it. And the searcher begins to try to wiggle his way back up backwards the way he came. The initial subject begins to get frantic and starts to yell and shake around violently and pretty much lose his mind. The searcher then tells him to shut up. After this, the final words of the initial subject are, please hurry, my chest is really starting to hurt, end quote. At this point, the searcher begins to crawl backwards up and up, but his mic abruptly cuts off and he or the subject are never heard from again. The last thing the foundation heard was the initial subject freaking out, shaking around, trying to crawl backwards towards the searcher. The searcher thinking it's weird because the initial subject was repeating everything. And then the mics went quiet. There's lots to unpack there, but just Picture this for a second. These two guys are in this small compressed tunnel at a downward angle on their stomachs. They can't move. They can't roll over. Oxygen is limited. Their heads are having all their blood rushing to them. Their chests are getting compressed more and more. The harder they struggle, it's getting worse. It's like a vice grip slowly tightening. And there's a small child in front of them both asking for their mother. They don't know where they are. The GPS doesn't work. It's pitch black. And all they can hear is is screaming and agony. That is absurdly terrifying. It's kind of like the Nutty Putty Cave incident, if you've ever heard of that, except about twice as worse. But that is SCP-1562 for you. I genuinely think 
This is probably one of the worst SCPs, the most terrifying ones. Several people on Reddit agree with me. This is one of the most underratedly horrifying ones. And I believe it might be my worst nightmare. Getting sent to a small cave, compressed downwards, unable to move, and kind of just at that angle until you stop breathing, I guess. And maybe now that you've heard about this SCP, you might realize why it's not as famous as the other ones, because it's genuinely probably too disturbing to talk about a lot. There's no idea where this tunnel is located. There's no idea how it's connected to the slide. No one knows how many people have been sent off the slide into the tunnel. We don't know how it ends. We don't know how many people are there, but we do know what position people are stuck in when they get there. And that might be the worst kind of knowledge. That is horrifying. So yeah, that was SCP-1562, my worst nightmare. And if you did enjoy this explanation, make sure to leave a like. And if you want more SCPs, also leave a like so I can know. And if you want specific ones, comment them below. Thank you for all your support and your amazing love. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. I got a ton more coming. I can't wait to see you and your reactions to the new content. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, that's also in the description. And check out Spoogly, my other channel as well, if you want more of me. Thank you for all you do, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.